This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a multi lock junior mortise cylinder. Now, I've picked an awful lot of multi locks on this channel in the past, and rarely does a day go by now where I don't get some sort of question about how to open multi locks. So, I wanted to take a minute before we start picking to talk about my approach to these locks. First thing is tension. You can see we have a really wide open keyway there and we can fit pretty much any kind of tension wrench in there. I could easily use something like a wiper insert or even a big thick pry bar. But you never see me using these more traditional tension wrenches. What you see is things like this, like this really thick Z bar. And there's a reason that I use something like this. What it does is it fills up the keyway very nicely and it provides a guide for me to slide my pick along the edge while I'm picking. So I don't have to worry about lateral movement while I'm picking. All I have to worry about is the depth of my pick. And that's really important on things like a multi-lock where precision pick placement is very, very important. The next has to do with the direction that I tension. On this lock, what I'm going to be doing is tensioning in the clockwise direction then inserting my pick directly next to the tension wrench and picking in the counterclockwise direction. And this is a lot more important than most people think. If I were to pick from the right side and pick in the clockwise direction, that's the same direction that I'm tensioning, what would happen when I have a security pin, something like a spool, is that the direction of my picking, the rotational force that my pick imparts on the core, would fight the counter rotation that you need to allow a security pin to set. So it's very, very important that you are always picking and tensioning in opposite directions on any dimple lock, but in particular on these multi locks. So with that said, let's get some tension on here and start picking. First thing I do is start looking for binding outer pins on number one. Got a little click there. Number two is binding. Got a click there and a little bit of a false set. Number three feels loose. Four and five, nothing there. Okay, moving back to the beginning. Okay, I got, okay, a click out of the inner pin on number one and we, our false set just dropped a lot deeper. Nothing on inner or outer on two. Three, we're getting counter rotation. Got three set. Four, counter rotation. I think I got four set, but something dropped and we may have lost our false set. Let's look for that again. One, two, three, okay, we got our false set back, four, let's move on to five. Outer pin on five, giving us some counter rotation, and we got him set. Back to the beginning. Number one, inner pin feels like it's binding. Okay, got a little click there. Nothing on two. Inner pin on three. Got a little click there. Four. And inner pin on five, got a click there. Back to the beginning. Inner pin on number one is binding. Okay, I think we got that inner pin set and our false set dropped a little bit deeper. Nothing on two. Three, okay, and we just dropped into a much deeper false set. I think all we have left are inner driver pins. Found one on number one, nothing on two, three. Okay, we've got one on four got one on five, and we open the lock up. Okay, this one definitely had a little bit of fight to them, 
let's uh, let's get this guy opened up so I can show you what's inside. Okay, first let's lock this back up, and then it looks like we need uh oh a Phillips screwdriver to take this apart. Now it's been a while since I picked a Multilock Junior, but I don't remember there being spooled driver pins in the last one I opened up. It might be there was, I just don't remember. But that might also be something new. Hmm. Okay. Okay, let's drop these key pins out. Number one looks like we have a spooled outer pin. Same on number two. Three is a standard inner and outer pin. I'm having some trouble getting the pins out of four and five. Let's get a pick here and maybe we can coax them out a bit. There's four. And there's five. Okay, let me arrange them and then we'll get the driver pins out. Okay, on our driver pins now. Okay, we have a spooled outer pin on number one. Standard outer in number two. Spooled on number three. Spooled on number four. And spooled on number five. So it looks like some pretty good pinning in here, particularly because this is an entry-level multi-lock. Okay, let me give you a zoom in on all of these pins. Okay, as you can see, we have all standard, standard inner key pins. And then for the outer key pins, we have two spooled in slots one and two, and then standard pins in slots three, four, and five. Then for our driver pins, all of the inner driver pins are standard. We have one standard outer driver pin in slot two, and four spooled driver pins in slots one, three, four, and five. Moving over to this core, you can see here's our five chambers. Nothing particularly unusual about this core. No drill protection at all, which is normal for the entry-level multi-lock. But other than that, not a whole lot to see here. Okay, that's all I have for you on this multi-lock junior mortise cylinder. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.